So in this lecture, we're going to be looking at tangent planes and linear approximations. And um, so, and then we're going to go into work on differentials and, and we'll look at talking about differentiability and that sort of thing and, and just some theory about derivatives. But what we're going to start out with is this whole idea of, or um, a, a corollary or maybe a, uh, an expansion of the idea of the tangent line. Okay, so like we've got, let's imagine we've got a curve in space and we've got a curve in space is two dimensional. And so we can actually draw a tangent line, right? You can imagine what a tangent line looks like. You actually, you go out, you find the derivative at that point. Okay, and that gives you the slope of the tangent line. And then we, we actually just go find a line as a result of that. And that gives us the equation for a tangent line. Well, now let's imagine that we've got a surface. So let's say, let's just take a straight round surface like a sphere. Okay, we have a spherical surface and if I go in and I, uh, you know, I take a particular path to a particular point on the surface. So let's say this is the point on my spherical surface, okay? And I take a path to that point. I can imagine drawing a tangent line and that tangent line has this direction, right? The direction that I'm pointing in if I come up along this curve. Now, what about if I come around here, right? And I'm coming up, the, again, this kind of the spherical surface or I'm approaching the same point, but now instead the direction of the tangent line is now you know kind of pointing out towards you or pointing out towards that direction in space okay what about if say for example um i come in along this this line okay i come on along a, a different line or a different part of the curve and then now i've got a another tangent line okay and it's going into kind of like a slightly different direction so we've actually got to reconsider what does it mean to actually think about tangency when we talk about three dimensions or more than three dimensions and what we're going to do in order to have that happen is we're going to have something called a tangent plane. So the tangent plane is you can imagine you've got the surface. So again, we've got the spherical surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine an entire plane. Okay, maybe that plane, you know, kind of, it kind of slants maybe in, in particular ways. And what's going to happen is that every tangent line, okay, to the surface will be on that tangent plane. So that tangent plane helps us to define every tangent line to the surface at that particular point, all right? And so, and it turns out that that's the only way that we know to actually have that tangent plane, okay? So basically what we're gonna imagine is that we're going to actually generate, right, a plane, okay, to the surface that's going to have um, all of its tangent lines on that plane, okay? And that's what we're gonna actually do as we develop the kind of the idea of the tangent plane. Then, and this is just a little bit of a jump ahead when we start talking about linear approximations, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, well, now a linear approximation is, is like, it's an estimate for the value of the function at a particular point. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna approximate, meaning that we are going to estimate it, and that estimation is gonna be based upon that tangent plane. And it's, it's actually gonna be identical, okay? Just like when we did linear approximations in one variable, what we did was we actually found out the tangent line and that was the linear approximation. Now our tangent plane is going to be the linear approximation. We're gonna use that in order to kind of estimate the value of points that are around whatever point that we're actually trying to find or that we're trying to estimate for the function. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So let's start out with a definition. Um, we're gonna let P naught equal, and so this is a point on a curve. And it'll be X naught, Y naught, Z naught, and it's a point on some kind of surface, really, surface S. And C is any curve that passes through P naught. So we've got every any curve that passes through P naught lying entirely in S. If the tangent lines to all such curves C, so every single curve that's on the surface, and you can imagine any surface that you want, every single curve that lies on the surface at P naught, if they all lie in the same plane, then this plane is gonna be called the tangent plane to S at P naught, right? So we're gonna generate this thing called the tangent plane to S at P naught. It is going to be the plane in which all of our tangent lines to, the, to curve C, okay? All these C's that are going through this surface, okay? All of those tangent lines are gonna actually be on this particular plane. So if you remember, we have the equation of a tangent line. And so the equation of a tangent line, if you remember, is going to end up being y minus y naught equals dy dx evaluated at x naught y naught, okay, 
times x minus x naught. All right, and so if you just remember, right, this is the slope of the tangent line. There's the slope of the tangent line. And then we've just got a point slope form. And that's our slope, the equation of our tangent line. Let's take a look at the equation of a tangent plane then. So S is the surface defined by a differentiable function Z equals F of X, Y. And let P naught equal X naught, Y naught. That's the point on the surface. And it's gonna be in the domain of F. Then the equation of the tangent plane to S at P naught. So now tangent plane to the surface at the point P naught, okay, is given by Z, now we've got a Z value, right, equals f of x naught y naught plus the partial with respect to x at x naught y naught times x minus x naught plus the partial with respect to y of x naught y naught at y minus y naught, okay? And there you go, that's it, all right? I, I know, it's like, oh, there you go, that's all. But what we're basically doing here is, is we've got the slope at x naught y naught kind of in that x direction. We've got the slope at x naught y naught kind of in the y direction and then essentially what we've got here is we've got this is the equation for a plane and we're going to see this in just a second that's the equation for a plane right the z value all right is f of x naught y naught we have our y naught we have our x naught okay there's your x y and your z all right and then our direction vector and we're going to see this in just a moment our direction vector is essentially going to be um, fx, fy, and 1. All right, And so what we've got here is we've got a plane. Now the other thing that you should notice is how similar it actually looks like to this equation for the tangent line. The two are really, really close together. Okay, They're very, very similar and that makes sense. You know, as creative as mathematics is, sometimes you don't need to be all that creative. Sometimes you just need to extrapolate. Meaning that we just need to expand from one variable to two and kind of like think about what does it mean when we add another variable in, right? What's the special things that happen? And that's exactly what we've got here when we talk about looking at the equation for the tangent plane. So let's go in and let's prove this formula for the tangent plane because it actually brings in a lot of stuff that we've talked about before and it'll be a great review for us as we're, um, you know, kind of learning more and more about functions of several variables. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna consider a vertical trace. So you remember a vertical trace is a, um, it's like a slice, right? Where we have a particular, uh, we've got a plane, all right? And uh, we're going to imagine like pushing our surface up onto that plane so that now we have like a two-dimensional two figure or a two-dimensional drawing along that plane. And so we're gonna do a trace of um, f of x, y, okay? At x, equals x naught, all right? So we're gonna set x equal to x naught. You should also think to yourself, hey, wait, I'm gonna take like, oh, it's a partial. And so a partial derivative, I've gotta like, for example, determine, I've gotta like set a, um, set one of my variables equal to constant. And this is basically setting a variable to a constant. So that sets to a constant. And that's what we've got here. So we're gonna look at this first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go find um, the uh, equation of the tangent line, okay, for f of x, y at, a lot, at the vertical trace x equals x naught, okay? Now, x is set constant, so that means that we're going to be taking the partial derivative with respect to y. So our z, whatever the z value is, okay, because we're in that vertical trace, z is gonna end up equaling f of x naught, y naught, okay, plus, and this will be fy at x naught y naught times y minus y naught, right? So by the way, this should be saying, this is in the x equals x naught plane, right? Basically it's parallel to the z, uh, yz plane. So it's parallel to the yz plane, okay? And so what you've got here is you've got whatever the z value is gonna end up being, it's gonna be evaluated at that point x naught y naught plus the partial with respect to y of x naught y naught times y minus y naught, okay? And so by the way, this is tangent line at x naught y naught. 
Now let's set our trace, and we'll do our trace secondly at y equals y naught. Okay, so this is now going to end up being parallel to the xz plane. So it's going to be in the xz plane essentially. Right? We're going to hold y to be constant. And if we hold y to be constant, then we're going to get z, right, just a variable, is going to equal f of x naught y naught. That's the value for z, or z naught, we call it, plus fx, right, because y is now being held constant fx, x naught, y naught, times y minus y naught, or excuse me, times x minus x naught now. Okay, so basically now we've got, um, I, like we've got our derivative in kind of the x direction-ish, all right, and we're gonna multiply that by x minus x naught, right, and because we're kind of imagining this in an xz plane. So, if we go in here and we basically, now what we're gonna do is we'll kind of parameterize. So we'll take take this first tangent line, all right? And so in my first let, tangent line, I'm gonna let y equal t. And so then z is gonna equal f of x naught y naught plus f y of x naught y naught times t minus y naught. Now y naught and f of x naught y naught, those are constants, right? We don't really need to worry about them. What we no want to notice is that this here, that's the slope for z, okay? And also that x in this case, right, is gonna end up just ending up, uh, ending up being equal to x equals x naught, and so its direction is plus zero t, okay? So basically, if I rewrite this as a direction vector, what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get zero for zero for x, y is gonna be one, and z is gonna be f of y, x naught, y naught. So that's the direction vector for, um, that is parallel, right? So this is parallel to, right, our tangent line. Now if I do that with the other one, with my other trace, okay, or the other tangent line that's in the trace, I am gonna let x equal t, okay, y is equal to y naught, which is basically y naught plus zero t. And again, y naught, that's a constant, just like x naught was a constant, okay? So y naught plus zero t, and then z is gonna equal f of x naught y naught plus f of x, x naught y naught times t minus x naught. And so consequently, this is gonna be the slope of z or the, um, the, the, uh, the component of the direction vector that goes with z. So my direction vector for that tangent line or that's parallel to the tangent line is gonna be, um, is gonna be one, zero, f, x, x naught, y naught, okay? And so that's my, gonna be my direction vector. One here for that t, zero for the y, and then f x x naught y naught for the z. All right. So that actually gives me now um, the two direction vectors that I'm going to need. And the reason why I need that is because if you remember, for the equation for a plane, we're going to need a normal vector n of t. Okay. And n of t, what we'll do is, uh, to find the normal vector, we'll just cross uh, these two vectors here. This first vector and the second vector. We're actually gonna go out and find the cross product of those two, okay? And that's gonna end up giving my normal vector, right? We need the normal vector and a point, which we already have, by the way, that's the point that we're actually gonna find it at, that's gonna be x naught, y naught, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna find my cross product. So I've got first, right, I've got I, I've got J, I've got K, and then I have zero, one, F of Y, X naught, Y naught, and then one, zero, F, X, X naught, Y naught. Okay, so let's actually go out and find this cross product. So we're gonna start out with I times, or I times, and we're gonna get one times f x x naught y naught minus zero. So this is just gonna be f x at x naught y naught. Okay, next up, 
this would be minus j. So here's minus j, and then we're going to get 0 times fx, x naught, y naught, minus 1. So it's negative fy, x naught, y naught. And then plus, and then our k, and this is going to be 0 times 0 minus 1, so this is going to be times negative 1. So this then is going to then be what we're going to get. The, these two negatives become a positive. So our normal vector, n, is going to be equal to fx, x naught, y naught, fy, x naught, y naught, and negative 1. And there's your normal vector. Okay. Now we'll just utilize the normal vector in order to find the planar tangency. All right, so um, what we know is, is that the point that we're looking at, the point on the plane, the point on the surface, is x naught, y naught, and z naught, which is f of x naught, y naught. So rewriting, what I get is I get that um, we're going to have fx, x naught, y naught times x minus x naught, that totally should be um, relating, so this is the equation of our plane, plus fy, x naught, y naught, that's our the second value in our direction vector, times y minus y naught, and then minus, and so the minus one, so minus one times, and let's say it's z minus f of x naught, y naught. And that's all equal to zero. All right, let's go in and let's clean up the equation here for the surface. So notice that um, this, this is a negative z, and then we're gonna change this to a plus f of x naught y naught. So our equation, we're gonna move the negative z over to the other side, over to this side. So this, we're gonna get z equals, it'll be fx, x naught, y naught, times x minus x naught, plus fy, x naught y naught times y minus y naught plus f x naught y naught. And what we have there is that that is the equation for the tangent plane. We end up with the equation for the tangent plane extending directly from all the stuff that we've already done inside of our previous two chapters. Now that we've done that, let's take a look at an example. Let's find the equation of the tangent plane to the surface. f x y equals 2 x squared minus 3 x y plus 8y squared plus 2x minus 4y plus 4, and we'll find that at 2, negative 1. So let's say z is, um, here's the equation for our tangent plane. So the equation that we're going to use. And let's go out and let's actually go and find this. So let's first find f of x naught y naught. So that means finding f of 2, negative 1. So that'll be 2 times 2 squared minus 3 times 2 times negative 1 plus 8 times negative 1 squared plus 2 times 2, minus 4 times negative 1, plus 4. And this then equals 8 plus 6 plus 8 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. So this is 12, 20, 28, and 34. So that's going to be f of 2, negative 1. Now we need to find the partials. We'll start out with fx. And so fx, we're going to get 4x, then minus 3y, because that's x to the 1, so minus 3y. No x is an 8y squared, so that's constant goes to 0, plus 2, and then no x is in uh, 4y, and no x is in 4. So we'll find now fx at 2, negative 1, and that ends up being 4 times 2 minus 3 times negative 1 plus 2. So this is 8 plus 3 plus 2, that's 13. There we go. Fy is then going to be, well, we look here, we've got negative 3x. That's our first term. Then we go to plus, eight, uh, plus 16y. No uh, x is in 2x, or excuse me, no y is in 2x. So get rid of that. Minus 4, and then constant goes to 0. We'll now take that, we're going to find fy, evaluate it at 2, negative 1. 
That's going to equal negative 3 times negative 1, excuse me, negative 3 times negative 1, plus 16 times negative 1, minus 4. So this ends up equaling, what is that? That's negative 23. So let's find Fy now. Fy is going to then equal, well, we got negative 3x plus 16y, so that, because that's 8y squared, that becomes 16y. No y's in 2x. No y, uh, we got negative 4, so minus 4. We'll now find Fy at 2, negative 1. This is going to be negative 3 times 2 plus 16 times negative 1 minus 4. So that's negative 6 minus 16 minus 4. That's going to end up equaling negative 26. So now we've got fx, fy, um, and we've also got f of x not y naught. So we can just plug these all in. We get z equals 13 times x minus 2 plus 16 times y minus, or plus, excuse me, minus 26 times y minus a negative 1 plus 34. Right? That's 34. That's f of x naught y naught. So this equals 13x minus 26 minus 26y minus 26 plus 34. So that'll then be just 6, 13x minus 26y and then negative 52 plus 34 is plus 18. And that is the equation for our plane. That's the tangent plane right there. And there we are. By the way, you might notice, and we'll talk about this when we talk about linear approximations, it's really easy to do stuff with 13x minus 26y plus 18 versus that polynomial up there. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to utilize um, this idea of a tangent plane in order to do something that's basically an application to the use of the tangent plane. And that is a linear approximation. We talked about linear approximations when we did calculus, calculus in a single variable, and now we're doing it in multiple variables and the um, corollary to linear approximations using a tangent line is using a tangent plane. Now, what a linear approximation is, is it is an approximation for the value of a function near a particular point, all right? And so what does that mean? Well, what that means is that, um, is basically we want, what we're gonna estimate, we're gonna estimate the value of a function, okay, utilizing this process. And you might say, well, why in the world would you do this? Why not just like plug it into the function? Well, the reason why is that sometimes it's more efficient to actually approximate it, okay? Like for example, when you're working with computers, computers actually can do approximations very, very quickly and to really like high degrees of accuracy. And it's much easier for them to work linearly utilizing linear approximations than it would be to say, for example, like go out and um, find the value for the function. So we actually utilize linear approximations, okay, to become more efficient, right? At first it doesn't seem efficient because we're doing all of it by hand, but it actually is, okay? And sometimes it's even more, um, uh, we can actually get pretty accurate or very, very accurate in terms of the values for our functions utilizing these linear approximations. Essentially what ends up happening is, is that we just go out and we find like the derivatives or the partial derivatives once, all right, and then we calculate values for those partial derivatives and we get a very, very simple linear equation that we can use rather than going out and having to utilize a very difficult to use um, function, right? And that's why we do linear approximations. So what you want to remember, what we're doing here with the linear approximation is we are calculating the value of a function, okay, at a particular point, but we're approximating it. So what we're going to do is we're going to see you're going to get given the function or the surface that we're looking at. We're going to be given the point that we're going to be taking the approximation at, and then also the point that we're going to be approximating. Okay. And so we'll see how that actually um, uh, kind of plays out as we work here with linear approximations. So let's take a look at some definitions. Um, so we've got a linear approximations and well, let's look at the definition. And um, so we're given a, Z, a function z equals f of x, y, and it has continuous partial derivatives. We'll talk more about that in just a bit that exist at the point x naught y naught. The linear approximation of f at the point x naught y naught is given by the equation L of x y equals f of x naught y naught plus f x x naught y naught times x minus x naught plus f y x naught y naught at y minus y naught. Excuse me, not y, but times y minus y naught. 
And what you want to notice is that that's the equation for the tangent plane. That's it. That's the equation for the tangent plane. Substitute in z for l of xy, and you get your equation. It's basically, it's the same equation, all right? It's the same exact equation. Just like before when you were doing linear approximations, what did you use? You used the equation for the tangent line. So we're gonna do the same thing here. The difference is how it gets used, all right? Is in the use of this linear approximation. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. All right, so let's consider this. Let's approximate f of 2.1, 2.9 for f of xy equal to 41 minus 4x squared minus y squared. So the idea of a linear approximation is we are going to actually take a point that's close to 2.1, 2.9, but that's not actually equal to 2.1, 2.9, all right? So we're gonna choose a close point and we'll have that be equal to two, three. Let's do two, three, because that's pretty close. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the tangent plane for f at two, three. Okay, and then what we'll do from there is we're just gonna plug in 2.1 and 2.9, right? We're gonna get an equation, a linear equation, very simple to work with equation, okay? at two, three, and then we're gonna plug in 2.1 and 2.9 in order to get our linear approximation. So let's go to work. So we'll start out, what are we gonna need? We're gonna need f of x naught y naught. So if I look here, that's gonna be f of two, three. So this is gonna be our x naught y naught, by the way. We're gonna like just disregard the 2.1, 2.9 for right now. So I got f of two, three is gonna equal the square root of 41 minus four times two squared minus three squared. So that equals the square root of 41, and this is gonna be minus 16 minus nine. Okay, so that's 41 minus uh, 25, and that equals the square root of 16, so that's gonna end up equaling four. Ooh, you can see that that actually kind of is pretty handy to work with here, because it's a whole number, right? Great. Now, what we need to do is we need to find fx. So fx, well, we're gonna utilize the chain rule here. So that means um, we're gonna say, okay, well, what's the derivative of 41 minus 4x squared minus y squared? That's gonna actually end up being negative 8x with respect to just x, because it's fx, times, and then this is gonna be 41 minus 4x squared minus y squared to the negative 1 half, okay, times 1 half. Right, so we'll just take that, that's the derivative there using the chain rule, that square root. And then we'll evaluate fx at two, three. Okay, so that's gonna end up equaling negative eight times two times, and we already know that this is gonna end up being equal to 16 because we did that earlier here. Right, 41 minus 16 minus nine, that gives me 16. So it's gonna be 16 to the negative one half and we'll multiply that by one half. And so that ends up giving me, that's negative 16. This is divided by four, because that's gonna be um, one over the square root of 16, and then times two. So this is negative 16 times uh, four times two, so that's negative two, okay? And that's just because I multiplied by one half, by the way. So negative two, great. Now Fy, we'll take Fy at two, um, first Fy, we'll find that. Again, we've got negative y squared, so that's gonna be negative two y times 41 minus four x squared minus y squared to the negative one half times one half again, okay? And that's my partial with respect to y. And so this will then, we're now gonna evaluate fy at two, three. And that's gonna be then negative two times three times and again, this is gonna end up being um, one over the square root of 16, so it's gonna be times one over four times one half. So this is now negative six over eight, which equals negative three fourths. Great. And let's just go through, we'll check it. I just wanna make sure. Negative eight times two divided by, so that's 16 divided by four, that's four divided by two, that's negative two, great negative two times three, that's negative six, divided by four, that's three halves, divided by two again, that's negative three fourths. All right, and there we go. 
So the equation for my tangent plane now, we'll go back to our equation up here, is going to end up being is going to end up being we got f of x naught, that's 4, okay, minus 2 times x minus 2 plus or minus 3 fourths times y minus 3 and that equals z. So there is our linear approximation or the function for our linear approximation. Okay, and now all I got to do now is I got to go in and um, I got to plug in 2.1 and 2.9. So z of 2.1, 2.9 is approximately equal to then 4 minus 2 times 2.1 minus 2 minus 3 fourths times 2.9 minus 3. So we'll get out our calculators and we'll approximate. And what we get when we actually plug that into our calculator is we get that this is equal to 3.875. So our approximation, we'll call this L of 2.1, 2.9, our linear approximation is equal to 3.875. Okay, so what do we do? We went out, we found the equation for the tangent plane, all right, at a particular point that was close to the point that we want to approximate, and then we plug in our desired value. Just like the work that we were doing with the approximation, linear approximations. Okay, we'll do another example. Let's say for example we want to now approximate four, no, f of 4.1.9 for f of xy equals e to the 5 minus 2x plus 3y. Okay, so there's our function and we're thinking to ourselves that's kind of hairy. Like e to the 5 minus 2 times 4.1 plus 3 times 0.9, that might not be very efficient. So maybe the linear approximation makes more sense for us. We're going to approximate using, we're going to use a number close to 4.19. We're going to use 4, 1. Okay? We're going to use 4, 1. And allow me to show you, if I take f of 4, 1, that's going to end up equaling e to the 5 minus 2 times 4 plus 3 times 1 and this is going to then end up equaling 0. That's going to be kind of handy for us later. So this is e to the 0, which just equals 1. So that's the first part that I'm going to need if you remember with your tangent plane. Make sure that you have that tangent plane equation with you as you're working. Now I want to find fx. Well, fx, we're going to see, okay, this is just negative 2. Right? We'll use the, we'll use the chain rule. Negative 2 times e to the 5 minus 2x plus 3y. Okay, because that's the only x in there. So f x at 4, 1. Well, remember what I said, that the power is going to end up being 0 at 4, 1. So this is going to equal negative 2 e to the 0. Go ahead and try that out yourself. Pause the video for the second. Make sure that that's the case, that you've realized that. So this is just going to be negative 2. Now we'll go f y. So f y is going to end up equaling, well, this is just 3 times e to the 5 minus 2x plus 3y. And so fy at 4, 1 is going to equal 3 times e to the 0, which equals 3. Now what we're going to do, our linear approximation L of x naught y naught is going to equal, okay, and we'll write this all down, this is going to end up equaling um, negative 2 times x minus 4 plus 3 times y minus 1 plus 1. So what I'll do with that now is I'm now going to find L of 4.1 comma point uh, 4.1 and that's going to equal negative 2 times 4.1 minus 4 plus 3 times 0.9 minus 1 plus 1 and this is then going to equal this will be negative 0.2 minus 0.3 plus 1, which equals 0.5. And so f of 4.1 comma 9 
is approximately 0.5. If I were to go in and actually calculate this with my calculator, let's see what we get. When we actually go out and find f of 4.1 comma 0.9, that in fact is approximately 0 0.0027. Okay, and so it turns out it's actually not all that close. Okay, so here's our linear approximation. And here is the actual, right, to four decimal places. And um, you can see actually in this case, we didn't get that great of an approximation. Probably wanted to get a little bit closer. It has to do with probably the, the, um, the wet look at the surface. But this is actually exactly the idea that we want to work with. We want to work with this idea of we're finding the equation for the tangent plane and then we're plugging in the value that we're looking to estimate, okay, into that equation for the tangent plane. And we're looking for a point, right, that is close to the value that we're looking to approximate. And as I said before, maybe in this case we wanted something even closer to get a better approximation. All right, so that finishes up uh, the work here with tangent planes and linear approximations. Um, stuff that actually uh, kind of helps us to illustrate what it means for us to work with derivatives in um, three or more dimensions, okay? That we get something that's somewhat somewhat different. We're working with surfaces now, and so when we work with surfaces, we're gonna start working with planes, and so instead of uh, the idea of a tangent line, we're really gonna work more with the tangent plane.